Okay, so uh, just a little introduction here. So today we're going to talk about the modified rational runoff method in Bentley Pond Pack. So we're going to cover some key things that you need to know about it when it comes to designing a pond for a small drainage area. So a little background about myself. My name is Jesse Dringoli. I'm the technical support manager for Bentley's hydraulics and hydrology products, which includes Pond Pack as well as some other stormwater, water distribution, and wastewater modeling products. So uh, what is Pond Pack? Um, well here are the before we talk about Pond Pack, here are the three things that we're going to learn today. Um, so like I said, you know, modified rational method is the focus and we're going to talk about how it differs from some of the other runoff methods. We're going to talk about how to set up and conduct a simple pond design using that modified rational runoff method. We're going to do that start to finish and then we're going to analyze some of the key reports so you can understand those results. Okay, so again, what is Pond Pack? So Pond Pack is Bentley's comprehensive pond design and hydrograph routing product. Some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, if not, it's uh, very much focused on pond design, but it can also handle uh, analysis of existing systems. So it can handle just a single pond design or a complex system of ponds that are all interconnected with tailwater effects and reverse flow and, and so on. So it's pretty uh, pretty robust. Um, you can route hydrographs through lots of different types of channels, ponds, and a number of different pond outlet structures. Um, some of them are listed here on the slide. It's a pretty modern user interface. You know, you can customize a lot of the toolbars, put things where you want. The drawing is shown to scale. You can include, you know, basically the shape of your ponds, a polygon that represents the catchment areas. You can annotate, color code, put in your background layers like uh, topographical maps and um, aerial imagery, things like that. Uh, very, very powerful interface, um, user friendly. Um, when it comes to simulating the runoff hydrographs from drainage areas, the unit hydrograph method and the modified rational method are supported, uh, as well as the ability to enter a user defined runoff hydrograph. So if you have another uh, method that you use, you can actually enter that as your own custom hydrograph. Okay, so unit hydrograph, a little bit of background on the unit hydrograph method. So it's uh, pretty widely used for a lot of different types of modeling situations. Uh, tends to be pretty well suited for some of the larger drainage areas. Uh, basically takes your rainfall information, the area of your catchment, your time of concentration, and your infiltration properties, uh, basically like your SCSCN, for example, and applies the unit hydrograph convolution algorithm to calculate the overall runoff hydrograph out of your catchment. So the unit hydrograph method and the unit hydrograph itself basically help sort of define the runoff response of a drainage area which uh, it affects the overall shape of the runoff hydrograph. So there's um, actually several different methods for generating the unit hydrographs. Uh, it gets pretty complex. The most commonly used one though in most cases is the SCS unit hydrograph from the Soil Conservation Service. Um, rainfall distributions, they can either be gauged events that you may have uh, measured, some historical events, but most of the time they're synthetic distributions. Um, for example, the SCS dimensionless distributions are used pretty often. Um, you might have heard of the Type 2 24 hour. It's a dimensionless distribution where you can basically take any depth and apply it and it creates, it takes that, that pattern of how that rainfall is distributed over time. Okay, so here's just a little graph here showing the effect of the loss method with the SCS unit hydrograph method using the SCS uh, loss method. This is just a synthetic rainfall event, uh, SCS type 2, 24 hour distribution, uh, total depth of 5 inches. So the red line you can see has the uh, curve number CN of 95, which is typical for something like pavement. Uh, the green line is a CN of 85, so it's a bit lower. Blue line is a CN of 60. So everything else is kept the same, just adjusting the CN, so you can kind of see the effect that, um, that you have on the runoff hydrograph when it comes to infiltration. This graph is showing the effect, uh, same storm, but the effect of adjusting the time of concentration. So it's kind of attenuating the hydrograph a bit as you increase the time of concentration. Okay, so 
The modified rational method is an entirely different methodology based on the rational method, which is sometimes referred to as the straight rational method, which is basically Q equals CIA. So the C in the Q equals CIA is the infiltration coefficient, or the rational C. The A is the area, and the I is the intensity, which is basically based on the drainage areas TC and rainfall information in the form of an IDF curve. So the IDF curve is shown on the left side of the graph here. So basically, uh, you know, you, you take the, the TC of your catchment and you look it up on the IDF curve for your given storm uh, frequency, and that gives you the intensity. So it's a, a pretty simple computation, but it's a peak flow. So, you know, when you're talking about analyzing storage effects, you need to route hydrographs, which is a flow over time. So the standard rational method is just a peak flow, so it's not really compatible with pond design. Now, the modified rational method attempts to create a runoff hydrograph while still using the standard rational method principles. So the graph on the right side shows how the modified rational hydrograph is constructed. So basically, the rising limb on the left side uh, takes uh, the duration equal to the TC to rise up to the peak flow. How long that lasts until it starts to drop is something called the critical storm duration, TD. And then the trailing limb, where it goes back down to a flow of zero, is also equal to the time of concentration. So what happens here is the program has to basically compute Q equals CIA, not with the TC, but rather with a critical storm duration that it computes. We'll get to that in the next slide. So that is uh, determining the peak and also how long that peak lasts. So it's able to construct this hydrograph while still using the, the simple rational method principles. Uh, so continuing on with modified rational method, um, this is just another example here showing um, how the hydrograph is constructed. The red hydrograph here is shown with the uh, storm duration equal to the time of concentration. So it's basically a, a, a triangular hydrograph. So it takes you know, about you know, this, this amount of time here is equal to the TC, but since our critical storm duration is equal to the TC, it immediately falls back down, and this duration it takes to get back down to zero is also the TC. So it's a high peak because the intensity is higher with a lower TC, or rather a lower um, storm duration, but it doesn't last as long. Um, contrasted to the blue line, which is you know, basically a longer storm duration, which results in a lower intensity, but it lasts longer, so it tends to have a, a larger volume. Okay, so the graph on this slide here is a little bit busy, but this is um, basically talking about the determination of a critical storm duration, or basically the worst case storm duration. Uh, this is something that Pompact does, and it's a, basically a key characteristic of the modified rational method that makes it different from the other runoff methods. So what happens here, and you can see on the left side, when you're entering the data for your catchment, your drainage area, you're entering both the pre-development conditions as well as the post-development conditions um, at the same time. So what it does, and what, what you can see on the right side, is it takes the, uh, the pre-development conditions and determines the allowable peak outflow from that. It does the simple Q equals CIA based on the pre-development C area and TC. And that defines the required storage volume for a given post-development runoff hydrograph. So the dashed line here, if you look on the y-axis, that's basically going to be equal to your pre-development target peak. So it draws a line starting from where that meets the uh, trailing limb of the post-development hydrograph and draws that down to zero. And this is called the I method of doing this. And it looks at the shaded area above it, and that's basically your required storage volume. So what it's basically doing here is that's, uh, that dashed line is an approximated pond outflow hydrograph. So the whole point about you know, pond design is to attenuate or you know, lower that peak outflow down to match your pre-development conditions after you do some development, put in a parking lot, something like that. So um, the shaded area is basically how much uh, volume needs to be stored in that pond in order to accomplish that. So uh, by doing this little calculation here, it's basically estimating your pond size for you. So what PondPack does is it actually tries 
uh, several different critical storm durations, and that's the different uh, hydrographs you see here. And it, it does that comparison for each one of them. It, it draws a line and it's, it looks at the storage volume, and it determines which duration resulted in the maximum, the highest required storage volume, and it determines that that's your critical storm duration. So the one that's pointed out here that's shaded in was the one that had the highest storm duration, and that was the critical storm duration for that uh, particular scenario. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a, a cleaner view, so um, you know you can see things a little bit more clear. This is just focusing on one particular uh, storm duration and showing the gray areas, the uh, uh, required storage volume. So since the program calculates the storm duration for you, it's really only feasible to have a single modified rational method catchment in your system. Otherwise, if you had multiple catchment areas, you could end up with a different critical storm duration for each one of those, which is basically saying that you have different storms occurring at the same location. That doesn't really make sense. So um, again, one of those points to stress that this you know, modified rational method is really best for you know, small areas, uh, single, single drainage areas. Okay, so here we have a comparison uh, just showing this is the modified rational hydrograph here. This is uh, SES uh, unit hydrograph method. So the point here is that the results are not, not compatible. So uh, you can't really expect to get the same peak flow, same volume between, you know, the same uh, return events since they're, they're two entirely different methods basically. Um, you, know, you, you can't expect that uh, you know the results that you get for a pond design with one method are going to yield the same results with, with another. It's, it's comparing apples to oranges.